in order to proceed before the adjudicate team officer. I remember I was in the conference that monitor. I received the call from Mr. Anish Agarwal, who is present here, that his account has been seized. And I said that just wait. I am coming to India, and then a complaint will be filed, and then I'll see how it is released. These are the things, and awareness has to be spread that the every adjudicating officer has power to punish the wrongdoer. <coughs> what is going on? Everybody goes to the police station, he lodges the complaint, and then he waits up to the two or three years, and nothing happens. Therefore, this cyber crime session will demonstrate before you regarding forensics, what we are doing on forensics, data evidence, digital evidence, and everything. And then you will come to know that it's a very huge conference which is being going on under the Information Technology Act. I will not take much time because the speakers are sitting here. They will say that you have taken my time, what I will do. Thank you very much to the speaker. The second aspect of electronic evidence is, electronic evidence is very authentic and I will give you a case study. There was this girl named Catherine who disappeared in, uh, in a Toronto suburb one evening and a complaint was made to the local police. Her whereabouts could not be traced. It was about one week since she disappeared. <coughs> the matter was referred to the high-tech crime cell. The high-tech crime cell examined her computer system and found that she had been chatting with an identity called Peanuts. Then they found the particular spot where her mobile phone was switched on at the last point of time. And at the spot they found five or six houses in the vicinity. They conducted an inquiry and they found in one house there was an old couple staying, one house was locked. In one of those houses there was a young man, 21 years of age, so they asked him to join the investigation, to join the inquiry and they also asked him to bring his computer to the police station. When they examined his computer, they found the same identity, peanuts, on his computer system. When they probed further into his computer, they found that on the given day when Catherine had disappeared, this boy had gone to Google and he had made three search requests to Google. Question one, why do bodies float on water? 
how to ensure that bodies do not float on water, question number two. And there was a lake nearby. Question number three was, what is the deepest point in that lake? Catherine's body was fished out of the lake and the murder case was solved. Electronic evidence is very authentic. It is unbiased and with the use of technology, the investigator can travel thousands of miles to the spot of the office, <coughs> leaving the last mile to various other circumstantial evidence that can be gathered. That is the second aspect. <laughs> the third aspect I wish to deal with today is the importance of the traditional principles of law evidence. We have the Indian Evidence Act of 1872. In my view, it is a classic piece of legislation which is relevant even in this age of the internet. And I will state certain examples to demonstrate what I am trying to build up. Section 3 of the Indian Evidence Act, prior to its amendment by the IT Act of 2000, classified evidence into categories, oral evidence and documentary evidence. Oral evidence is the evidence given by witnesses in the court of law. Documentary evidence is the document produced in the court which is led in the court as proof of any fact. <coughs> it was widely believed by the lawmakers that perhaps the law of evidence of 1872 has become obsolete. It, was, it could never have been imagined that we will have electronic evidence in the year 1872. So therefore, we need to amend the definition of evidence. Hence, the definition of evidence was amended in the year 2000 to include electronic records alongside documentary evidence. Now the definition of evidence is oral evidence, documentary evidence, including electronic records. Now I will critically <coughs> examine this provision. I will read out the definition of document that has existed in the statute book, section 3. Document means any matter expressed or described upon any substance by means of letters, figures or marks, or by more than one of those means intended to be used or which may be used for the purpose of recording that matter. Illustrations, a writing is a document, Words printed, lithographed or photographed are documents, a map or plan is a document, an inscription on a metal plate or stone is also a document, a caricature is also a document. My contention is the definition of evidence and the definition of document are so wide, are so technology neutral that it was not really necessary to amend the definition of evidence. My submission is, if an inscription on a metal plate or a stone is a document, binary numbers on the hard disk or what is there on the computer screen or what is there in a floppy or a CD or a pen drive were always documents within the meaning of the definition of 1872. Hence, the amendment to the definition of evidence is merely cosmetic, it is superficial, it was not necessary. However, had the lawmakers left it at amending the definition of evidence, I would not have had any, had any difficulty because one can say that it is by way of abundant precaution that the definition has been amended. But the lawmakers have gone ahead 
and amended various other provisions of the Indian Evidence Act. For example, sections 34, 35, 39, 59, 131, all these provisions have been amended to include electronic records alongside documents. So far, so good. However, some of the very important provisions of the Evidence Act have not been amended. For example, Section 91. Section 91 has not been amended. Now, Section 91 of the Indian Evidence Act lays down a very important principle that where the terms of a contract or agreement are reduced into writing in a document, the terms can be proven only through the document. You cannot need oral evidence in so far as the terms of an agreement are concerned. Now, Section 91 having not been amended and other provisions having been amended, it may be argued plausibly in the court that if an agreement is in writing, if it is an, in a paper form, it cannot be left in evidence to prove its terms. However, if the same agreement is electronic, oral evidence can be there. Now, this is an anomaly that has crept into the law. <coughs> Another instance to state that the law of evidence is a classic piece of legislation relevant in this day and age also can be demonstrated <coughs> in fact that when the IT Act came into existence, the asymmetric crypto system of digital signatures was legally recognized. Now, within about eight to nine years, it has been realized that other forms of signatures have come into existence. While at one time, the law of 1872 is relevant, even after 140 years, the IT Act of 2000 could not sustain its relevance even for eight years. So, therefore, it had to be amended in 2008, 2009. And now, it is much more open-ended. It does not restrict itself to a particular technology. A law should never restrict itself to a particular technology. Because then, the moment the technology changes, the law becomes obsolete. The last element I wish to discuss is the collection of electronic evidence. Collection of electronic evidence is a challenge. It has to be handled with a lot of care and caution because electronic evidence is highly sensitive. And therefore, I have always stated that there should be some kind of a manual, some kind of a best practices guidelines for the investigators as to how electronic evidence should be collected, how the hard disk should be handled. Because I was talking to a, a CBI officer in the CBI Academy and he told me that uh, a CD can be destroyed merely because of some temperature, some, some friction or if you are wearing warm clothes, if there is uh, some current in the body, it can destroy a contact. So that is the level of sensitivity of electronic evidence. If a CD is destroyed merely because of the current that is there in the body, you can imagine the sensitivity. And a valuable piece of evidence can be lost. With this I conclude. Thank you. You have just given the broad view of digital evidence. These are things which are happening in Goa, what has happened? That husband has given vulgar language to his wife by SMS and through the data evidence, digital evidence, she was arrested. The recent case which has happened in Goa and the crime has been registered. Now, I will request him proceed. Now we can have speech of Sri Aro Gupta in respect of forensic importance of the cyber world.